Hi guys, this is Snow and I'm Kurt and we started a journey to travel around the world. We built our own van about four and a half, five years ago. We've been traveling for four and a half years. And along the way, we learned all sorts of items that we didn't start the journey with that are really key to us now. So this is gonna be 12 items of things that, well, we think are really important in the van and aren't necessarily your everyday items you might think of. Now, we're talking about living in a van, but most of these will work perfectly in your house too. We're just sharing what works for us in our little teeny tiny house. Things that we can't do without. <laughs> but the first thing we're gonna start from is the kitchen. And one of the reasons we're starting there is because we live in a van, we're on a low budget, even though we're traveling the world, we cook most of our meals in the van. And so, Kind of the first thing, maybe it seems regular, but not. Is the pans. So frying pans, skillets, saucepans, they take up a lot of space in your kitchen cabinets at the house. Well, we don't have a lot of space. In fact, we have one very small pot and pan drawer. So I started researching on Amazon and I found three pans, a skillet, a smaller skillet, and a medium sized saucepan that stack inside of each other and they do that because the handle is removable so there's one handle for three pots it also comes with a lid which is really nice for splattering grease and trying to keep things clean uh, we needed pans that work on induction because we use an induction cooktop in our van but these will work on any type of a cooktop and they really organize our tiny little kitchen cabinet drawer so they'd be really awesome in a big kitchen cabinet too they have three sets and they can get all the way up to nine sets. So there's all kinds of variety of these things. But for us, it's the three sets. Yeah, we've had these pans for about two years. They're nice and thick and distribute the heat very evenly, which I like about that. And also other pans tend to warp and these have held up really well. We've had them for about two years. Yeah. I love them. If we have to get new pans, we'll probably get these pans again. Yeah. But the next thing is knives and sharpener. Now I'm pretty particular about my knives because we cut up a lot of veg, a lot of fruit, and a lot of meat. And well, I just don't like a dull knife. <laughs> so something a little bit interesting about these knives is this is one thing that actually came with us from our past life. This is the first real gift I gave to Kurt. <laughs> I knew right away when we were starting dating like over 20 years ago that he was a at-home chef and he needed good knives so I went did some research bought these knives 21 22 years later they're still going strong they're amazing knives they definitely made the cut to come with us from our house to our van how do you keep them working so good though well to have knives that long first of all you have to have good knives and these aren't top of the line but these are good knives that have held up but you need a sharpener and back home we had like a 110 electric sharpener to keep them super sharp well the problem is we can't fit that in the van so along the way we picked up this little sharpener it's a cheap little thing but everywhere we go we take our knives in if we're in a hostel or if we're in an apartment we even take the knives in and the little sharpener to keep a sharp edge and we have met other people in little hostels and stuff and the knives are always dull and they see me over there just slicing away and they're like can we use your knife <laughs> can we use your sharpener too <laughs> so, so anyway uh it, it's the knife and sharpener is really kind of maybe seems intuitive but i know not everybody has a good knife and sharpener the next thing all right so in our pre-van life life back in florida we were not coffee drinkers in fact, we drank this vitamin mix-up drink called Spark. We both loved it. Orange was our favorite. It had lots of vitamins. It was good for you. It gave you a good kickstart to your day. But as soon as we left the United States, it's not available. They do not ship it internationally. So we were missing that for sure. I was definitely bummed because that was my caffeine. That was my energy. That was my mental boost. So. Yeah, yeah. So we stumbled through Mexico without our Spark vitamin drink, and we made it to Guatemala, and we did that amazing coffee tour with that farm in and the finca, yeah, with that nice little family there in Antigua, and we decided then, well, let's drink coffee. We're going to be traveling through coffee country. 
a big fancy coffee pot is not going to fit in the van so we settled on a french press now I did a lot of research to find one that's sturdy, doesn't have any glass, doesn't have a handle because a handle takes up too much space in the cabinets. And we found this guy and it works amazing. We've had good coffee in Guatemala, Panama, Costa Rica, Colombia, Brazil, everywhere. Local coffee in a lot of countries. We use this thing at least once a day, sometimes twice, and it gets two giant thumbs up from me. And when you're drinking coffee, you need a coffee cup. Now Snow has sort of a big relaxing cup. She puts cream in her coffee and drinks it down pretty fast. <laughs> I, on the other hand, sip my coffee and this little Yeti cup right here keeps it hot for like two or three hours. It's got a little magnet, magnetic flip top on top it's like double lined and insulated, so it keeps my coffee hot, so Snow will make her coffee. I'll put it up on the dash and maybe don't start drinking my coffee till we start heading down yeah. the road. But I love this. Not only does it keep hot things hot, it keeps things cold, cold it keeps cold things it's cold. cold. <laughs> and I said at the start that a lot of these things we didn't have at the beginning. Well, this is another one we did, but when we were in Mindo watching the birds, I set it down and walked off and left it. He was we so were sad. two hours down the road. I said, Snow, we got to go back and get <laughs> it. And said she no. said, no, <laughs> because we're not going to navigate these crazy mountain roads just for your cup. Needless to say, the next chance we got, I ordered another one. So that should tell you yeah, what I think yeah. about this cup. Now, before we leave the kitchen section of this, you may notice a trend. Everything we've put in here is about not having handles. So that's a little secret tip. If you're moving into a tiny house or a van or you're traveling and you need things that are small, you want to get things that do not have handles because they just really clutter things up in a small space. All right, moving out of the kitchen. This category is for van related items. And the first one on the list is fans. Now we've used several different fans and we do have Max Air fans. But when it comes to moving air on your body, on your face, whatever, to really cool you down, we have a, two fans over our bed, one for each of us. And then in the kitchen, we also have one fan. And we've tried different ones and just between the cat hair, the dust, the grease from cooking, yeah. all the stuff in a the van, they've all died. And so we were in Cuenca, I believe it was. I believe so, Cuenca. And Mary showed us this van. Showed us her van and she had these fans. Now I had eyeballed them before, but they are not the cheapest van available. They're not top of the line. They're upper middle class fans. So I've always <laughs> passed on them because they seemed a little bit too expensive, expensive for our budget. For sure. But they came with a big recommendation from Mary. And one thing I liked about them a lot is they do not have a graded cover. You know, it's just the fan blade, which scared me, but we got to test it at Mary's. We actually put our hand in there and it didn't hurt at all. So no cover over the fans to collect dust, pollen, and cat hair. It makes them really easy to clean. They're quiet. They put off a nice white sound at night, which we like because it blurs out any background sound. And they've just performed really, really well. They're adjustable. They're durable. They're simple. They work and they've held up longer than any other and fans anyway. we've had so far. And really, they're not squeaking or doing anything no, crazy, great. so we're super excited about those. Uh, the next thing is kind of <laughs> a little bit of a weird thing, but we were down in Argentina on Ruta 3, which is kind of the route that goes down the coast. And you would have to go off on, we were chasing penguins and uh, sea, sea lions, lions yeah. and all that type of stuff, but it was very remote. Long story short, a huge gust of wind came up, blew us off the road, and we got stucker than stuck. We were stuck for Devastatingly like, stuck. We were Not stuck a little bit nights. stuck. Yeah, and with no one around. And then what ended up happening is, so when we prepared and planned for this journey, we have all the safety things that you need in a van. So we went to dig it around. Somebody finally came by and asked if we had a rope or a strap. And we didn't couldn't find it. We couldn't we find it. We thought we it. did, but we didn't. Yeah, I still think we did, and it just got lost or misplaced along the way. But it showed us definitely the importance of needing a good, high quality tow strap in your vehicle, even if you never use it. The peace of mind for us now knowing it is there is huge. We were stuck 
no cell phone, no anything. The only way out was either to wait for the, dry to, the ground to dry out or to have someone tow us out. Yeah. Now, some amazing people from Argentina came along. They were on the way to see their penguins with their family. They literally got in the mud and dug with me yeah. and helped dig the van out. We hooked some wires and ropes we that tried. we could pull together to try to pull it out. We just ended up popping those. You just need a toaster. About to give up. And this couple from, wait for it. Ukraine. This couple from <laughs> Ukraine comes by and they were happy to help us. They had a tow strap, pulled us right out. They even had a little vehicle, but yeah, pulled, pulled us, us right, right out. out. And oh, by the way, one of the first stops we made once we got unstuck, once we put fuel in the gas and gave all our new friends a big hug. We love you guys. Thank you so much for bailing us out. The first thing we did was got a strap. Yeah, a and strap. so we recommend yeah. that you get one if you have, live in a van yes. or are a traveling. Yeah. Even if you're not doing extreme off-roading, this was just a dirt road, nothing crazy. It's just the wind came through and pulled us into the ditch. You never know. It is a very smart thing to have in any vehicle. And speaking of emergencies, another good thing to have is a headlamp. Yeah. Now, I will tell you this. We were down in the island of Chiloé, down in southern Chile, really yeah. kind of in Patagonia, on the edge of Patagonia. We were looking for the world's smallest deer. We had, <laughs> we had a magical encounter with this little deer and the, and the reserve, the owners of the reserve said, you guys need, you need to go out at night because we have wild cats. We have wolves, foxes, all kinds of this really cool night stuff. So I like went out for the hike in the middle of the woods and I was gone for like four yeah. hours and this had a, held up it was starting to get dim towards the end but it made it for the whole way i can tell you we have two headlamps but that's for emergencies because you are not going to catch me doing a night hike but kurt uses that thing all the time and it's great yeah i didn't see any cats but i did see the poodoos but the cool thing about this is the battery lasts a long time because it's led it's super bright and it can have a narrow uh, beam or a wide beam, and it charges with the USB really yeah. easy, which is important. Now, they have a new version out, which is what I'm showing you right here, and I'm always about getting the new upgraded version. I think the new one even has a longer battery life. So, it's not only good for hikes and other things like that at night, but it's also good if somebody's banging around outside the van or you gotta yeah. get outside and fix something. I consider it a, a critical a piece of a must have. Yeah. And then moving right along here, the next category that we're moving into is more like lifestyle. And we moved, we moved into the van. We weren't sure what we were going to do. Yeah. Turns out we spent a lot of time in the nature and a lot of time walking and hiking. Yeah. And one of the things that we discovered really helps us out tremendously is walking sticks. Yeah. Hiking sticks, walking sticks. Uh, some people use one or two, you know, it just depends on the type of hike you're doing. We both have a set of two that are adjustable heights with different tip choices on the bottom. We've used the heck out of them, especially uh, with the instability of me going through the knee replacement surgery and then, then my heart issues being weak a little bit. I really depend on these. So we, um, we're trying to talk Kurt's parents into getting them. Yeah. It's just we really, really enjoy having these. It's not something you have to use on every hike, but even if it's not an adventure hike and it's just some stairs, you know, if you've got weaker knees or anything, they're just really helpful to have around. They shrink down pretty small and will fit in a backpack so you can take them on a hike and only use them on the portions that you need and they come in a lot of cool colors. Yeah, and also as Snow alluded to, not just for hiking, but as you get older, maybe you have balance issues or whatever. Yeah and you know you're not made of rubber like you are when you're young when you fall things break <laughs> even walking around town they can be useful in the right applications yeah. kind of like a cane or something like that so anyway i feel like walking sticks are really important if you're going to be on a journey like ours and you're going to be doing some time out in the nature yeah and along those lines you also need a good set of hiking shoes 
Now I've got these set of Solomons that Todd brought me down yeah. when we were in Antigua and Guatemala. You love them. And those I have been wearing those things ever since. If you guys have followed along, you guys know I've done a lot of mad hiking. He has tested these things out and they have held up really, really well. Held out good on volcano rocks. They're waterproof. I've had them in rivers and lakes Glaciers, and all kinds everywhere. of crazy places. And they've held up really good. So you want to get a good pair of hiking shoes. I recommend these. I'll put a link in the description so you guys can find them easily. And then another thing in terms of lifestyle that we get asked about all the time. All the time. So I'm going to take over this section because <laughs> it's all about clothes. And when you move into a van, you have to make some very strategic decisions because you don't have a lot of room for very many clothes. The other thing is nothing hangs up. So wrinkling is an issue. And living in a van, quite honestly, you want comfortable clothes. So it's hard to find things that can roll up small in a drawer, not wrinkle, and be comfortable. I found it back in Mexico, these cute little t-shirt dresses. There's two or three different styles as far as cut and shape and pattern that I love. And there's so many different colors, but they roll up very small. I can fit 15 of these in my little tiny you know, drawer in the van. They don't wrinkle too bad. They're incredibly comfortable. They've held up well with washing and, and just all kinds of things. So I get asked in the YouTube comments all the time where I get my dresses. And I am always surprised when I have to say Amazon. It's, <laughs> you know, it's just surprised me that the quality was there and all of that. So we have put a link to that. So you'll be able to go check those out. And like I say, two or three different brands, but I love them and they're perfect for stuffing into a suitcase if you're traveling that way or into a little tiny drawer if you're traveling in a van or a camper and they just work out really, really, really well. The last category is camera gear. Now we have done a full video, I'll link it right here. We have done a full video on all the gear that we use but a lot of people haven't gone back and watched that video and we get a lot of questions specifically about a couple cameras. Yeah. And number one is the DJI Pocket. That is our workhorse. That's what we're filming this video on. That's what you're gonna see in 90% of our videos yes. that were shot yes. we have after two of them. Central America, I yeah. think is when we, we each, got them. We each have one. We started off shooting with iPhones. It was very shaky. And the big camera which is just so heavy. And in some of the areas we go, you don't want to walk around with a big obvious camera. These guys are so small and compact. They're called a pocket because they'll literally slide in your pocket. So they're not intrusive to the people around you. The microphone quality is, is top notch. It's got the gimbal. The so gimbal. when you walk, it's not so bouncy and shaky. We really, really love these things and we use them like crazy. We have been through one because we've wore it out, but that's over like two and a half years before we had to replace it. And you got to remember, we use these every single day. They are our workhorse cameras. And they're not waterproof, but believe me, they have gotten us footage in some epic spots. Yeah. And you might be thinking, well, I'm not a YouTuber or anything like that. Well, guess what, guys? It's great to document your journey. We see people doing it with phones all the time. Mm -hmm. And every time somebody sees us walking around with one of these DJI pockets, they they're ask, like, what is what that? Is that? <laughs> and so now yeah. you know. Now, back when we bought these, these are the DJI Pocket 2, which is a great camera. And if you're wanting to stick with more of a budget, you can still buy this one online until it probably sells out of stock but they just rolled out the DJI Pocket 3, which we wish we could get our hands on, <laughs> but our budget won't let us right now. It's got a flip screen, so you're able to shoot in YouTube mode or in Instagram Reels or Stories mode up and down, and it's supposed to be shooting better at night. They've made a lot of improvements. So you've got the choice between the two and the three, but if it were me, I'd be getting the three. I would definitely like to get the three, but we'll have to wait and save our pennies. <laughs> yes. The other camera, and I think this, well, it's an adventure camera. Yeah. So when I was pulling down footage for this video right here, I was like, oh my God, I have so much epic footage because this is the camera we get out when we are in the adventurous yeah. epic spots, especially like if we're driving in the van and we want to show you guys the road or the van driving through yeah. some of these conditions 
or maybe we're going to a spot yeah. like Iguazu Falls yeah, where we're right crazy. down in the middle of all this water. Yeah. This is definitely one of the most asked about things in the YouTube comments is how do you get that footage? Is it a drone? Are you following yourself with a drone? Which would be next to impossible in some of the places we take this. It, who's holding it? Because it has the magic selfie stick. I call this our magic camera. Yeah, it, it has technology that sort of erases the self selfie stick. Yeah. It's 360, so you can actually choose the angle of your shot in the edit. So it's kind of recording everything. So, you know, when you're riding on a bike along a canyon or something yeah. like that, you can't see where you're pointing the lens. Well, this films everything around you. So in, yeah. in your editing mode, you can get it faced on you. And I, I don't want that to scare you, that editing mode thing, because it comes with its own little editing software that you just download onto your computer or your phone. We use the computer, but you could do it on a smartphone. And that editing program is pretty, you know, push a few buttons and turn a few things. It's pretty easy. So don't let editing software, when we're talking about this, confuse you. It's pretty simple. It does have a, a like a, a sort of a fisheye kind of viewpoint. So the camera, the footage is a little distorted. So not quite as clean and pure as these DJI pockets, but nonetheless, you get epic stabilized footage and we absolutely love this camera. It's waterproof too, yeah, which is perfect for any kind of an adventure walk. Yeah. So guys, all these items are linked in Amazon. I believe all of them made it are yeah. in Amazon. And we do get a little commission if you click over to Amazon and you end up buying a product. And we really appreciate that. That helps us along our journey. So thank you. I hope you guys found this list useful. I know we find these items yeah, useful. We use them and use all them the almost time. every all the day. Time. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, thanks for you guys for following us our journey. And uh, yeah, we hope to see you guys on the next one. Next week, we'll be back doing something crazy besides selling you our favorite products. But I don't want you to look at this as a sales video because we truly put the Snow and Kurt stamp of approval on these products. We did. Cheers, Cheers. guys. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys.